Hey everybody, Will here from machineloveus.com here with another in this series of building an information product. Uh, this is the product called Casper, um, which I won't reveal what, what it's gonna do here. The purpose of this video is to dive into connecting our Flask REST Plus API that we built in prior videos up to a front end. Now, what's nice is when you develop an API and develop those endpoints, you don't you can s sort of swap out uh, the front end frameworks. There's a lot of JavaScript frameworks out there that you could use. You could use Angular, which was popular popular a couple of years ago. You could use React, which is currently it seems like it's dominating some of the business applications that are in production. But uh, there's a new JavaScript framework called uh, Vue.js, which I've chosen for this product just because it's so simple to set up um, and get running. And there are some nice uh, tutorials that I reference myself when, when building this. And so stick around, we're gonna jump in, we're gonna connect our APIs, Flask REST Plus endpoints to uh, Vue.js JavaScript framework. Okay, so this is eventually what I wind up with at the end, and it's really a static one page um, sort of front end, and it's not doing anything exciting just yet, but what's nice is it it is connected to the APIs, uh, those Flask REST Plus APIs, and then I can start in later videos and other work, start connecting that functionality up to here. So to do this, I'm as I said, I'm using Vue. What you need to do here is if you don't already have it, you need to install Node and NPM. Uh, so Node is a language. NPM is the package manager for Node, uh, Node.js. I don't know too much about Node or NPM. Uh, I, I've used them a little bit in the past just for these sorts of things. I'm not a big JavaScript person. Uh, but I know enough to be a little bit dangerous. So what, where I am, as always, I am in my Casper directory. I've activated my uh, Python virtual environment using Python 3. Um, what I have here is I have, I'm going to run my API in prior videos. Uh, we set up that API, it's listening on port 888 localhost front end API. So this is running live separately. This is my Casper API. And then it's connected to a database, MongoDB database. I just ran Mongod down, um, down here. And so that starts off my Mongo database. And then what I have set up is my view application um, and to run that I do npm run but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here to so now we have uh, npm we have node uh, what you can do is install Vue.js just follow the directions on the Vue.js uh, site there's some getting started kind of um, tutorials that you could do that wouldn't, you, wouldn't even require you to download Node or, or get any of that running. But to, to begin building uh, in a Node, uh, sorry, a view project, uh, you're going to run uh, the following command. Once you have npm in installed, you could do npm install view, uh, and that will get everything uh, set up for you. I already have you installed, so I'm okay. Uh, you could see it's at this version 2.5.21. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I could do view version. I guess not. Oh, it's view capital V. Oh, 3.2.1. Okay, so I'm at view 3.2.1. And now what I can do is view create. So in my uh, in my app in Casper, I laid this out is I have uh, created this view app as front end, but you can create it 
uh, whatever you want. So let me do view create demo. And so what this will do is walk you through the creation of a view project. It's, it's pretty nice how uh, you can pick a default um, in installation package or you can manually select the features that you want uh, your installation to go through. I don't know too much about Vue to say what uh, you should do. Unit testing sounds <laughs> sounds like a good one to pick. But uh, presumably you could pick all of these as well and just get a really functional Vue project right out the gate. Um, but I just picked some of these presets. Apparently the Airbnb config is is nice. You can lint on save, which, which seems nice. And then um, I suppose in uh, package JSON. Uh, again, I'm not a big JavaScript person. Um, so all of this sounds fine to me. And then it'll run through the installation. Here again, I'm setting up this as demo. I've already done this as, um, as front end. So I'm going to exit out of this and then go to the front end that I have set up. Okay. So here in sublime text, I have front end and I just ran through that same uh, sort of installation project process that I showed you before. And so there's node modules, which are the installed sort of libraries, equivalent to libraries in Python. Uh, there's this public um, folder, which I don't think we're gonna spend too much time in. And then there's source. And so um, there's source components, which uh, are pretty critical as I understand it in this introduction to view and then app.view, which is where a lot of the groundwork happens. So I've already modified this a bit, but what I'm going to do is show you that instead of, uh, so I've modified a component homepage.view, you start out with hello world.view. So let's start out there. And so what I did in this app.view is import, uh, instead of home page, hello world, from hello world dot view, and then the home page is hello world. Okay, so I've saved that, now I gotta fix this typo. And so how, how do we start up this, uh, this view app? So usually what you can just do is npm run, uh, and normally, that's how I do it, but I want to run it from the top level of my directory. So I'm at the top level of Casper and I want to run NPM for the front end. So I just do NPM run dash dash free prefix. Front end is the folder. If I was in front end, I could just do NPM run serve, but instead I have to add a little bit extra just because I want to run this from the top level. And what this does is it's starting uh, this server and it, what's nice is it's gonna listen for changes as well. So you don't have to be too concerned about it. So on local, it's located here. And so I go there and I have uh, already modified this uh, beyond the Hello World app. Okay, so just so you could see this view app, what I've done is it's just gone to this uh, sort of code pen, this sandbox, just to show you what it would look like if I hadn't modified it already. Uh, that's what it would look like. Um, but I have modified it. I went to, I made a homepage.view that is particular to me. Um, and then from in this components piece, so I'm going to delete this hello world. Um, and then in my app.view uh, file, I'm going to import the hello page component. Oh, it's not hello page. What's nice is you get that feedback right on the, the page itself. Um, what happens is it automatically loads because it's, it's watching out for changes in the files. Okay, so what have I done? Um, so the two files that I have really worked 
within to get all of this set up. A lot of this, it, the rest of this is just boilerplate that I got from creating that demo app. But uh, this home page dot view takes this template here. Uh, and so instead of uh, all of the stuff that was in that template from Hello World, removed all of it and then put back in uh, just this assets that I have. I've saved this essentially PNG that I call writer home. I also have a ghost home in there. So if I change that to ghost home, then I'll change that and then get started creating your first article. So get started using our ghost writing system. Okay. So make those two changes and then I'll show up right on the main page right there. Uh, again, because it's listening. So this homepage.view has the styles and implementation. Uh, it also has this script, right? So this script here, now this is where the API uh, that we're using. So notice that I have here uh, where API products. So this actually, if I visit this location, is data that is being returned from the Flask REST Plus API. It's products, an array of products from the database. It's very crude, right? But it's essentially a representation of what's in my Mongo database at this time. And so what I can do in homepage.view is using this uh, node module, Axios, um, create an array let's call it products. And I need this empty array because view is watching for changes in this array and it won't know that there are changes if it doesn't exist. And then I set this constant path, get, let's get products to this API endpoint. And then using uh, Axios, getting the path, I'm going to say this dot products and then put push into that array the products that are at that endpoint. Okay, and so calling that uh, function, that method, I will be able to return data to uh, the front end, which uh, is located here. Okay, so what's happened? Nothing's happened. The data is existing there. And by the way, it's nice, kind of nice about uh, JavaScript and doing this front end work is that you can use Google, Google Chrome developer tools to see what's going on um, as you're working. And so if I kept this as get books instead of get products, uh, it would it would essentially throw up on me which is what's happening right there. And so what's nice is when I fix that reload, uh, that error should go away and it does. So in my homepage.view, I am accessing this data at that endpoint, right? And now what I could do down here is just the CSS essentially styles is put in a table. That's what this commented out code here is. Uh, with columns. So it's just essentially a table class. My data has customer input, the user, and then whether they received their product. Um, and so for, for product in products, which is what I'm returning to the front end, I can query push to this table, the user input and the user, and then whether they've received their product, I'm going to say if, uh, so V for V if the product, if there is output, uh, then it's a yes, otherwise it's a no. And what's nice is this is you know, standard HTML, but I've pushed, I've pulled this data from this API endpoint. Uh, pushed it here and I'm able to see get this table right down here of customer input the user ID whether they've received their uh, product or not now I've also got a problem 
Uh, okay, so I have some JavaScript errors. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, one's a warning. There's a warning. Cannot proper read property output of undefined. So that is a problem. Uh, but essentially, what I have here are six products, uh, and they each have output, which is great. So remember, this is my Mongo database. Uh, I have a collection. I have two collections in my Casper database, um, six different records, and all of those six records are able to be you know, pulled from that Flask API endpoint and then displayed on the page. So the big thing here is that I've set up a Flask REST Plus endpoint and I'm able to reach that endpoint from this Vue.js app that I've essentially just built using the um, view create command and then slightly modifying essentially two files, the hello world and the um, app dot, app dot view sort of main uh, I suppose it's controller, although I think that's the wrong word for it. And then here again, I have the API running, I have the database running, and I have the view app running. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Uh, so I need to figure out what these errors are, essentially. But uh, I've done a lot of work to get to this point, and now we can start, now that we have data on the front end, we can start manipulating it, using it, getting users, and then eventually building the main engine of this data product, uh, which will be coming up in other videos. So please like and subscribe. Appreciate all comments and thoughts. Hopefully this is um, helpful to you. Even if you're not creating a data product, you want to set up a view app uh, that connects to a Flask. REST plus endpoint, or just a flask, or just an API endpoint in general.